Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's The Incredible Crash Dummies, brought to us by LJN. The Incredible Crash Dummies on the Game Boy, based off of the PSAs that were running at the time, as well as the action figure line that was also created for The Incredible Crash Dummies. This game is different than the NES version for sure. In fact, it's a minigame compilation where you have to play through five minigames four times each in order to complete the game, which is what we'll be doing here. The first of the five games we're doing is one where you have to dive off of buildings, hitting targets along the way, and making it to the bottom. When you dive, you're able to hold up in order to slow up and kind of like float, or hold down in order to nosedive in order to kind of like break through the various barriers of the stuff and make your way down. You want to obviously avoid the flames that are in the building and hit as many of these little awnings and porches as you can. As long as you hit enough of them on your way down, you'll successfully complete the game and move on to the next day. The second one has you driving a car. Your goal is to pick up the air cans along the way and make it to the end. The controls are relatively decent for the car, not amazing, but definitely workable. I can pretty much say that for everything in this game. It's like, it's not great, but it works, once you kind of get used to everything. During this though, you want to make sure you don't crash into too many of the barriers. If you crash into too many, you end up losing. Thankfully, it's not too long of a course before we end up hitting the wall and move on to the next game. The third one is you are skiing down a slope. Your goal is to hit as many flags as you can, but you have to at least get 15 in order to complete the job. The ski controls definitely take some getting used to of hitting left and right in order to kind of keep shifting your momentum. The isometric-like view takes a bit for sure to kind of get the hang of it, but once you do, it's not too bad. You can also jump that can help you greatly get away from obstacles. Every time you jump, you go straight, so even though you're only going kind of like left and right diagonally, if you want to go actually just straight down, you can jump in order to do that. As long as we hit enough flags at the end, which we did, we're able to move on to the next game. Here, you have to move amongst three conveyor belts and keep putting out bombs and making sure that you pack 40 non-exploded bombs into the different boxes at the end here. There's also random other pieces of crash dummies that will end up showing up on the conveyor belts as well, and you can string them with your hammer in order to earn a little bit of extra money, though my focus is more on the bombs and making sure that I blow out <laughs> their igniter. For this first one, we have to pack 40 bombs, which seems like a lot, but it honestly doesn't take too long for them to start filling up the various crates at the end, and they tell you how many you've gotten in each one. So you can pretty much tell exactly when you get to that number 40 mark, and successfully complete the minigame. The controls here aren't great, though. This is probably, like, the worst one, just because moving back and forth between the conveyor belts is actually pretty sensitive. So you have to be extra careful to make sure that you're actually able to get to where you need to hit the bombs on time. The fifth and final of the minigames has you controlling a rocket, making it to a target, watching out for various obstacles along the way. The controls for this are there's kind where you kind of hold down the button and you gain momentum, but if you're not pressing the button, you fall like a rock and you kind of got to keep that nice balance of floating up into the air keeping momentum so that you don't crash, but not enough that you don't end up landing into a rock above you. At the end of the area, there's a target that you're going to land on. As long as you hit that, you successfully will complete the mission. 
I've had it though where I just barely were off of it and it doesn't count. You have to pretty much be dead center on it. Once you've completed all the mini games once, it then automatically, as long as you were successful, goes to the next difficulty where you start things over again. Starting, of course, back with the building where we're going to jump off of it and work our way down to the bottom, going through all of these canopies and porches again. There's plenty of them for you to be able to hit, and once you reach the bottom, we're moving on to the second game here. The course for the car this time around is a little bit more challenging, and that's pretty much how it goes with them. Each time, the difficulty increases just a little bit. Every time that you run into one of the cones or something, you end up gaining a little bit of money, but every time you hit a barrier, you end up losing money, so you have to be careful with that. Too many barriers, and it is a loss, and you'll have to start this over again. It can be very difficult on some of the courses here to be able to dodge all, or at least most, of those barriers. I end up hitting several on this trip, but we reach the end and move on to the next one. Here we have some more skiing. As long as you don't run directly into a tree, you should be pretty good. Just keep shifting your weight back and forth so you're able to hit the various flags on your way down. Every singular flag is worth 5 cents, whereas every two double flag is worth 10 cents. The amount of money that you have, though, doesn't seem to matter at all, because at the end of the game, it just tells you how much you've earned, and that's about it, giving you kind of like a high score thing, other than really affecting the ending or anything like that. Next up, we have the conveyor belts again, blowing out the various bombs on them. While you can destroy the other objects, you just want to make sure you're always keeping your eyes focused on the conveyor belts to see when the bombs show up. Also pay attention to the speed of the conveyor belts. They're going to be going at different speeds, so if a bomb shows up on one lit and another one lit at the same time, you're going to go for the one that's going faster than the other. Once we build up enough bombs, we are slamming and jamming, which means we got a perfect, and we're moving on to the next game. Back into the rocket ship, we gotta carefully maneuver around all of these rocks, watching out for the missiles. Any path that you take is fine, whichever one you prefer. It's really more about where my momentum is and just kinda how I'm going. I'll decide which way I wanna end up taking. Here we reach the end and hit the next target. It's at a different spot than the first time around, so you gotta make sure that you end up finding it. We then shift over to the hard difficulty set. Starting off once again by jumping off of this tall building. Make sure, of course, when you get to these, you pay attention to where the target is at the bottom, so you at least know where to hang out mostly for when you reach that bottom of the building and land correctly on the target. Back inside the car, we're gonna work our way through this course. There's falling barrels now that are going to be going on as well. Take the left path here. Make sure that I go far enough left that when I do that jump I end up landing safely onto the road.
smash our car into the target, and move on to the skiing. Once again, our goal is to hit as many of the flags as we can, working our way downwards while watching out for the trees. Also added are like these snow banks, so if you hit them, you'll turn into a snowball and roll down the hill, and then after you get out of the snowball, you go back to where you were, so it just ends up eating up a lot of time. Just keep shifting your way here at the end, and we'll reach the bottom and move on to the next game. It gets harder and harder with each passing time to the conveyor belt. Bombs is the one that usually ended up costing me runs a lot of times. I'd end up missing a bomb. Just barely miss it. And I end up losing. This is another one of those cases where a game came out and it ends up being very different on the various systems that it ended up coming out for. I'm not sure which version I prefer between the Game Boy and the NES version. I think the NES one overall because it's just more of a traditional platformer. Whereas this one doing the five minigames multiple times, it starts to get a little tedious by the end, but thankfully they don't last too long, so you don't usually find yourself really getting bored or anything with them. With enough perseverance, we're able to survive it and move on to the next game here. The hard rocket ship adds a cloud with lightning coming out of it right from the very beginning, so you gotta be careful as soon as you kinda go up that you don't get hit by that. So I usually stay very low at the start. Watch out for the volcano here, you gotta get up pretty high in order to get over it. Then keep working your way over to the right. The target this time around is actually up on one of the little rocks here. Just have to kind of make it there. One last little set of enemies that we gotta deal with. Just take our time and land on top of this one in order to complete the third of the Rocket Games. It's now time to begin the fourth and final round of playing through these games. One last time off the top of the building. Crash our way through the various obstacles as we make our way down. I'm going to mostly stay on the left side. I can get a lot of the various porches and awnings and such and land safely on my target in the middle and move on to the next game. As we drive through the obstacle course for one more time. There's a lot of barriers. We're going to have to go back and forth pretty quickly. A few of the paths do lead to dead ends, so you do have to be careful of which ones you end up choosing, but most of them end up leading where you need. The ramps are a little bit difficult to hit on these minigames. So a lot of times I end up either missing them or like hit them on the side and don't do the full jump. For the final time skiing here, it's just pretty much a harder version of what we've been dealing with, just slightly. A lot of trees near the very beginning we're going to be shifting quite a bit through and then jump over the snow pile, not to get caught into a giant snowball. I pretty much will do that for most of the piles that I'm going to potentially run into. Thankfully you don't have to hit too many flags during this. It's mostly surviving is a lot of what you need to do. Be 
be careful with your jumping while it's very useful for getting over objects. You don't want to accidentally land right directly onto a tree or something. Here we have our final time at the ammunition factory. Just have to quickly shift ourselves between the various conveyor belts and just be ready to immediately blow some breath right onto those flames so, so you don't end up having these bombs blow up at the end. It's definitely pretty frantic in this final one, just trying to deal with the bombs. The conveyor belt's going pretty quickly, at least some of them are. Like before, you gotta make sure that you take care of the faster moving bombs first. Once we get our bomb amount, we move on to the fifth and final minigame here on the very hard difficulty. Be very careful at the very beginning, don't get pulled in here. And watch out for the lightning cloud right after that. I'm going to take the bottom path around the beginning. Watch out for the other cloud right after that. I'm going to have to go under it. The game may slow down a little bit with these rockets going up, it'll just help you probably. Same goes for when you're going over the volcano here, it's just a little bit too much going on for the game to handle. Here we reach the end target and we can enjoy the ending to Incredible Crash Dummies on the Nintendo Game Boy. After that little ending, we then get to put in our initials at the high score screen. As long as you get over $50 during the game, you'll have the high score. But with that, we'll wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.